Hey guys, welcome back to the Sketchy Vert channel. Um, it's me, Jared, and, and AKA I Drive Sketchy. You guys seen the last video, and that was kind of what, like eight months ago I posted that. It's been kind of a while. The hurricane, things like that, we kind of had, it kind of put us behind on getting the new build for Sketchy. But wait till you guys see the new car. It is Sketchy Vert 2.0 all over again, you think? Yeah. But, uh, Good old Matt, he put a lot of hard hours and work into the car. Um, kind of tell us about yourself, Matt, and uh, your, your little company here. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm just like a nerdy wiring guy. <laughs> just a glorified car stereo installer. It's been doing it for a really long time. But uh, I truly like and get into the wiring. Um, not many people literally, like say they enjoy it. If they do, they're probably just as crazy as I am. When you came to us and wanted to redo the wiring I popped the hood and I definitely said um, we can we can help you out um, I'm glad you did because I was at a loss at the time yeah yeah so we basically just hit the reset button on it started over from scratch um, you know I probably used 30% of the existing harness and most of that was really the EGT stuff we definitely added a lot more capability of the dominator um, nothing is almost as sad as seeing a, a holly dominator with two plugs sitting in it um, just because they're they're super capable they can do so much so we took we took a little bit of advantage of that and uh, gave you a little bit more redundancy and safety and stuff to look at along with some more drag race functionality you should be able to really get this thing hustling down the track in ways that it, it's never been able to do before never been, been able to walk like it has and... yep you know it's it's just kind of like when I when I get brought to you guys, I was I like I said I was just at a loss, and the, the quality of work you guys did, just wait till you guys see it. it's just on point, and I couldn't be happier with the work. You know we're just excited to have the car back and have it raceable again and do some events. And uh, you know I don't know if I'll do the whole YouTube crazy stuff again, um, but we'll definitely do a lot of events down here and a lot of you know YouTube that stuff and. You know, Matt's going to be the, the tuner behind Sketchy for the most part. Uh, and Cy. Me and Cy, yeah, yeah, mainly Cy. Sure. I just lurk in the background. For and you'll see like Cy, he'll, he's on his way. We just kind of started the video early because we wanted to kind of show you guys the car. You know, I want him to show show what's what's going on with the wiring now. Um, uh, the car, the motor's been completely rebuilt. It's a 380, 388. 388. Right? Yep. So it, we de-stroked it a little bit, so it should, uh, it should zing up a little higher uh, than it did before. Like, that's what we want. We can add more boost to it now, right? Uh, there's, yeah, there'll be a little bit more uh, headroom in the turbo with a couple of less cubic inches, but we'll be able to take full advantage of what we got. Sweet, sweet. Well, come on over here, guys. Let's show you this car and Sketchy and Sketchy Vert 2.0. He's back. I mean, don't mind the seat. It's missing a seat. We just didn't get to that part yet. I got that at home, but that's going back in the car. Um, I know it's weight reduction, but that's okay. We had. Now added a, a new kill switch. It doesn't have the uh, the, the big rod coming out the back uh, anymore, and yeah. that's gonna be nice because before I had a plate thing that was over it, and it took me like two hours to change the battery. So the plate's all gone. Its battery's right there. I can change it. It was a nightmare. I hated it. And uh, this is all this is all super nice. The technology that's in the car now is it's a little unreal. bit more advanced than the old school clunky cutoff switch. Um, I've had people and I've run into issues with those where, hey, the car isn't reacting right and you kind of give it a wiggle and, and then stuff acts right. But instead, um, we went uh, with a big 300 amp solid state um, battery disconnects and we actually split it up. Um, one's in the back of the car and it's handling basically all the holly and all the fuel pumps and, you know, all the aftermarket systems. And then we put another one up front and that takes care of the alternator and the starter and the car systems. And that keeps us from having to run, you know, big fat wires up and down the car 16 times. You know what I mean? Like, like, they had, like on the bottom, they had all, all the tables and everything. Yep, and... yep. Now there's just a single run that goes up front and uh, you know they're basically being used as power distribution points, and uh, we'll see one of them, you know. And the other one's a little tricky to see underneath the front, but sure, um, sure. it just, in a strange way, it simplifies things. It's all, it's, it is it's so awesome. Like it's, I don't have that wire down below. Yeah, you know, and um, you know I'm not. If if we can run things inside the car in a nice clean way, I'm more into that um i always just think worst case scenarios i mean we've seen those worst case scenarios in the track and um 
you know, we try to avoid pinching things, um, you know, in the sides. That's why all the fuel rails are done, run down, you know, basically the tranny tunnel on the other side of the torque arm. So if something were to fail there, you actually have this large layer of protection between everything. Um, now all the wires, like I said, are run inside the car, so nothing's going to get crushed or pinched or, you know, anything like that. It's, it would take like a significant something bad happening on the street really sure. to, to, to get into any of that. And even at that point, you know, everything is fused. Um, something I never really see too often out there. Um, we have these high amperage, slower blowing fuses. So, you know, it, it's a 400 amp main fuse. So if anything really is to go south, the car is protected and it's not going to just spiral into horrible. Yeah, I don't even want to use. Don't even want to use that word. Sparks and shorts, yeah. like the shirt says. <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> everything you're trying to not get um, is what I named my meet myself after. So a little irony there. He pretty much started all the way, pretty much all the way from the back to the front, and he did also clean up a lot of the stock wiring um, just from over the pass, over the the shops that Sketchy was at. Um, a lot of stuff's been cut and just kind of misplaced to the side and uh, kind of out of sight, out of mind type thing when he went through and completely got rid of all the balls of wire and, and things like that. So it's just so much cleaner. You guys gotta check, check this out. Let's go show them the, uh, the interior. Let's show them the interior first, kind of see how, see how this is. You guys remember the, you know, the, the shifter over here that had a bunch of switches and stuff. We don't need all that because everything's right up here on the steering wheel. Um, I think what Matt one's a trans brake now. Yeah, and the button on your right is your trans brake, and then the button on your left is your staging, um, and it doubles as a scramble button. So if you're if you're if you're really wanting to put the sauce on somebody, um, that'll give us an instant whatever we command it for. It's like like a hundred pounds boost. Uh, I think we actually <laughs> targeted for like one fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah, dome pressure like one hundred fifteen dome pressure. So. We're gonna send it. Send it away. Kind of a little change, so I'm gonna have to get rid. You know, used to all the no more buttons. Yep. Um, everything's right there by my hands and by my yep. fingers. And what's kind of neat is um, these buttons go through the factory clock spring, and just from experience, you can't find these clock springs anymore. So it sounds a little weird, but I really don't like cutting up a car like this because we all know that the like these cars will be sought after in collectors' items, and I just you know. So I sourced all sorts of factory connectors and this stuff all plugs in up front and down at the steering column. So if you ever needed to get that extra $10,000 for functional steering wheel buttons, uh, you have all that stuff and you perfect. can plug it all in and it's not, uh, it's just, it, it's just perfect. I mean, this oh, car really? is such a, it's like a time capsule. It I is. can't tell you the last time I've seen one of these cars with factory speakers, factory stereo, and all of this stuff functions. Factory seats, electrical seats, everything still works. It's absolutely wild, and I love it. And that was just more of the motivation to not cut this car up. Right. It's definitely like that confused, am I a street car, am I a race car? It's confused. It's, it's a grand touring car, it's, yeah. you know. It's a resto mod. It's almost a resto mod. It's almost a resto mod. I mean, this thing's old. Like, I gosh, I bought this car in 2005, and now, Gosh, we're in a 2022. Yeah, in a couple couple of years, you're gonna be able to get the Florida antique tag, for, <laughs> you know, and save on your insurance. That's this is wild. Oh, and the best part of the build, uh, Matt put a new antenna in. Right here, it goes up. I ended up breaking it off. Uh, what 2018? And I've been sad ever since. So there you go. It works. And that, that's the best CD's part of the build. Whatever. That CD. <laughs> I think I burned that like, oh, I didn't burn, I uh, can't, can't say that, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so much like, 20, 20, 20, remember that, Sarah? This, I don't know if you've seen that even. Back in the days of mixtapes. <laughs> the back in the day. You know this car is old when you have burnt CDs. Yep. Is this, is this illegal? <laughs> <laughs> you, we didn't play any songs on this. This is just a blank CD. It's just a label. That was, that was nothing. <laughs> just label. But we got the CD player. I mean, this is like. This is awesome. It's like MTV Cribs, like you're looking at a Lamborghini or something, you know? Like I mean, this got... technology just doesn't exist in a modern car. It doesn't. No. It doesn't. It's not, like, not at all. It's like, uh, yeah, it's crazy. But the seat will go back in. I still got the factory seat. That'll go in. Uh, I got this piece here. I got it all at my house. 
Uh, but we're gonna dyno sketch you today. Um, before we do that, let's let's pop the hood and kind of show show the good folks what uh, what kind of wiring job you did on this thing. Well, sadly, there's not much to see. Yeah, it's kind of all hidden, but um, it's a lot. It's so much cleaner than the factory wire being but wiring being everywhere. It was just kind of you know with all the all the hands that were in this car um, over the years. It just kind of stuff got cobbled up and forgotten about things like that so you know we just i just really wanted it clean and i really wanted you know when i seen matt's work i just and and, and size work i really wanted them to um go to town on it and, and make it right get rid of wiring that we didn't need factory wire we didn't need um so for the most part i mean i could not be happier i mean this you know, I, I don't know what this stuff is, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, just to give you an idea, like, you know, go ahead, Matt. You you fab, um, you kind of tell them what you laser cut it on that. Yeah, it sounds weird, but we were having a, a tough time finding a, a 60 minus two trigger wheel that met all of our requirements. So it was actually just easier to draw it in Fusion 360. I 3D printed a test piece to make sure I was happy with everything. Then we sent it to. Um, Sai happens to have a laser, um, so he makes. Thank you, si. we, we can make our own parts. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that that took probably ten minutes to cut out on the laser, and it went right in as intended. And it actually worked. It, it it works really good. It should give us a little bit more resolution than the thirty six minus one that was in there before. Weird little things along the way. Little changes, and, and the biggest. Well, I think one of the biggest changes we did, or these guys did, not me. I, I can't weld, and I can't wire for it might save my life or rebuild an engine Neither can they. so um <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i don't believe that <clears throat> but uh the, the cutouts we did the cutouts on the uh, on the bumper exhaust exits on the on the bumper i didn't i, I really didn't know how to feel about it uh so i was like so what are we gonna do with the exhaust and i'm like i'll just put the cat back <clears throat> back on it when we're done build and he's like well, i thought we we're building a race car and i'm like Okay, I go, what do you got in mind? He's like, let's do bumper exits. And I'm like, all right, I like your, I like the way you party. Let's let's do it. <laughs> Why not? So, I mean, we, we took out a lot of weight of the car. I mean, I can just tell. I mean, I got a lot of weight. You know, just what you guys did just by doing that and getting rid of the, the, the heat shields and yeah. the exhaust and, like, it's so much weight. So, I mean, granted, Sketch is still a heavy pig, you know, and I'm not going to cut the car up more than I have to to keep it like a full-on functional street car, uh, you know, just full interior is what I, I'm going with. I'm going to see what I can do with the times with a full factory interior convertible Trans Am. I mean, at, at the end of the day. Uh, we, we have a slight idea of what this will do at the end of the day. Um, like as long as I hit 13s, I'll be happy. Like, that's, <laughs> that's a goal, man. <laughs> Seriously. And that's 8th mile, right? 8th mile, 13th. 8th yes. mile, 13th. Eight, eight, eight mile, we're going slower than the stock. That's what I, I want to make sure it's, we slowed it down a little bit. <laughs> they put a new uh, throttle cable in. Um, they changed the dipstick around the, for the transmission. It used to be up higher, but they put it so I can easily easy. reach, reach so, it. Yeah, you, you should be able to fill it a little easier. Uh, I found that the fuel pressure regulator, I like actually in that little spot there. Um, it actually lends a little bit of a functionality aspect to it because if one thing that sucks about F-bodies is, you know, uh, you got half an engine back there. So yeah, sometimes it's... stuff is tricky to get to, but within about 25 minutes, this intake manifold comes off as a unit. Like you crack a couple lines here, there, there on the booster, move your steam port, and this all comes out uh, super duper easy and lets you get to the other half of the engine more or less <laughs> you know we try to blend a little bit of serviceability a little bit of art and a little you know a little bit of it all so if, you know me and cooper are working on it or whatever we're just like i can just be like hey man like what's this do like this wire or what like because you have a booklet you left the um, booklet of yeah I, I made a note you know i made notes for you whomever you know i get run over by a bus and somebody needs to you know <laughs> tap in Figure um, what's happening. there's actually you know you have a notebook for what we built so you know, we should be able to figure anything out. I mean, pretty much from the ground up, wiring, new motor. I mean, yep. The the fuel system got. Fuel system. Um, oh, that's right. You know, all the lines were dry rotted and just kind of hard shaped. Um, so we cleaned that up and kind of upgraded it. You know, we had some dash six stuff feeding it. 
Um, we're more like a dash eight type of party. Um, so little things like that. Um, you know, we got the secondary fuel pump stage now. Um, just lots of little, lots of little tweaks. You know, they all make sense. You know, it's right. not, it's nothing exotic. It's just, it's just how we do it. Just, I'm okay with having everything checked and rechecked and gone over because the other day you want to go to track testing the car and having problems after problems and chasing things down. And I've been down that rabbit hole and I just got tired of tired. It takes all the fun out of it, it when does. you're not actually racing at the racetrack. Um, you know, I had a couple days of shaking down all of the systems, and yeah, don't get me wrong, you know, when I start a project like this, there is stuff that I go back and have to, oh, shit, I gotta flip that to make it work right. Um, but that, you know, to me, that's half of what this job entails, is making sure that everything works. I mean, and there's a lot of other stuff that, I mean, we get to talk about this for a long time, but um, I really just wanted to stay loaded and get out of the dyno, so. Um, We'll talk about that another day. Yeah. And um, let's go see what this you know, thing does. Little things, but you guys, it's back. We're gonna see what this baby can do. Unfortunately, Cy didn't show up, so I can be like, hey, it's Cy, the other guy who built the exhaust and did a lot of the work, and this is the shop, and blah, blah, blah. You know, I can't do that. So, um, anyways, we're gonna get Sketchy loaded up on its own power. You guys don't understand. I haven't driven ca the car since I moved to Florida, and I moved to Florida in 2020. So at the end of 2020, and I haven't, it's never hit the Florida streets. Um, so getting it on the streets and, and being able to just drive it in the trailer is, uh, uh, it's just, it's, it's unreal. Like, I, I don't believe it. I haven't had the car for so long. So we're, I'm just pumped. I know Sarah's pumped. I know you guys are pumped. Uh, I just like to see and the smile on your face, man. Everybody's just, it's coming together finally. And you know, it's it's just a this finding you guys is a blessing because I really wanted to find a good shop in Florida and finding Cy and, and, and you and you know you guys have been super awesome. So let's get this baby loaded and let's get to the dining. So we're not pushing it on. <laughs> it's <laughs> yes. so heavy. Not pushing it on, yes. We've done that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. In the winch. My winch is finally like, I don't thank God. <laughs> no more. I'm tired of this. Tired of this, so yes, we'll get her started and cool. I'll roll it up there. Yeah, man. I think we're ready. Do it. And break! <laughs> yeah. So, I was just getting ready to get in the car. I looked at the CO2 bottle and I go, holy huh. crap, we don't have CO2, I don't think. Uh, yeah. Do we have any? And that's like, oh crap. And then we checked it after sitting for like two years, it still has CO2 in there and it's on green. So, we're good. <laughs> Disaster averted. All right, let's get this thing loaded. She is strapped down on the dyno, putting some gas in her. Sai is going to be doing his master genius tuning on the car. Ready to rock. Okay, guys, so we just did a pull, saw some sparks up there so matt is one of the straps is kind of hitting the rim so we uh, fixed that up matt zip tied it back together and uh we're back on 
besides the uh, genius tuning behind his famous name. for 10 on the dome the last pass we asked for five in the dome and we got about 12 in the manifold so maybe 18 to 20 we're gonna find out once we pull the log 22 15 15 psi all right hey that's good yeah man we're not pushing things we're not too pushing. Hard how's the intake times um pretty hot, <laughs> pretty hot? yeah that's what, was, that's what i was scared of she does like to climb her intake temps <laughs> Pass for years. Yeah. I mean, it's just the old, you know, my old stock intercooler, or the intercooler that's in there. Actually, right. not about 111. Um, yeah, 111. So it was way worse that other run. So we got plenty of CO2. You think? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a hidden, there's hidden valve on your bottle that I didn't know. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good. Once we found that, um, it works a lot better. Went on the thousand horsepower pull that she was on for boost. Look at the top of the coil, see what it says for max. I think it's fine. What were we at on boost for that, Cy? Si? Uh, on point. the thousand horsepower pull. They sounded great. It's looking good. 23 pounds. 23 pounds. Yep. 23. 23 pounds. What are you feeling? Are you everything looking okay? Looks good so far, man. So far? So far, so good. I think we're gonna do five. Hell yeah. I'm excited. Is it like crazy seeing it from the outside of your car? Like Yeah, like seeing it. Seeing oh yeah, like it just jumps and just torques up and then he lets out of it and it just it drops doesn't down. Feel like that when you're in it. it doesn't feel like that nasty on the street. Like that that crazy of a pull. I've been with you. Right. But it crazy how rowdy it is or it's getting each pole each each dyno pole you know we got some catchy plugs here japping my plugs it's a pretty cool little uh nice tool nice tool there where'd you get that at me tuning and racing you guys build these yeah nice that one looks like really easy though so we're having on the last pole we're having some breakup yeah Breaking, so, it's breaking up a little bit. So we're gonna look at a couple plugs, pull the wires, and check everything out, man. Let's see what's up. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the dyno.
Max Torque 1654. <laughs> Alright guys, so sketchy spin on the dyno, so we added some weight <laughs> to the back. Well think about it. These See, guys. That water is seven pounds. Seven pounds. Right? Seven times five. Plus <laughs> That's where we think she spawned there. That was a 2018 I thought he said 700. I was like, oh, that seemed like a bigger pole than that, but did you think he said it too? I know, it was like, it seemed like a good hit. Baby steps, baby. Yeah. Sex broker. Yeah, we were uh, north of 1150. I 1150. think we saw 1178. And 911 foot pounds of torque out of a baby 388. Yep, yep. So. Just a couple of cubic inches there. But um, we started to see some issues that we've kind of decided to draw the line for tonight. Yeah, for sure. um, towards the end there, those last couple pulls, um, we saw the crank signal um, kind of drop out and the car shut, shut itself down temporarily. Um, so we were unable to kind of rectify that, so we're kind of calling it a night tonight. I think something might have loosened up, something goofy, because it's been rock solid like up until. So we got to push it on it. And the right. springs might. Yeah, and then there was that concern too. Uh, initially, we were asking for like 20 on the dome, and we were seeing 24 in the manifold, and we were hearing some breakup. Um, and then we got a pretty, a pretty spicy little fireball action out the, out the tailpipe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Um, and we were definitely thinking that maybe the valve springs, because, you know, you said they're five years old at this point, and they sat for, for a 
while too, what, a couple of years. So some of these are compressed speed, some are uncompressed. So I think at this point it's kind of like a, a question. So, you know, they can kind of uh, settle back in and we've heard stories from smarter people than us that valve springs can kind of go through a curve right as they're starting to fail. Uh, and maybe, maybe this is what we saw. Maybe we're on the valve train roller coaster. Um, but definitely the, the crank signal falling out, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of ended it for tonight. Um, so we're gonna look into that, make sure, you know, that our bracket didn't just loosen up or move or rotate or something stupid. And we'll be back to see if, you know, I wanna see 12 out of it. I think that's totally possible. You know? So we were gonna, we wanted to see 12 tonight and we were just gonna be like, but all right, we got that close, that close. Yeah, we're gonna get it loaded up the trailer, get it back to the shop, and check into this. This is what I'm doing it, so. Thanks, guys. I gave you more of a box. See you guys! First time Sketchy's been on the street, and Matt's driving it. <laughs> That's funny. So, you guys pay close attention. Uh, we're done Dino Sketchy for the night, but. Pay close attention to the master detailer right here. Not only a master tuner, oh, you like that? but he's a master detailer. I mean, Believe I, I hope he did this on my car because it was really clean. So now I know how the underneath got so clean. This guy right here. With Windex <laughs> and a white rag. That's all you need. You're going to sell perfect. the crap out of Windex now for Windex because you're cleaning cars. When Windex. it gets rubber off, right? Windex, you're welcome. <laughs> Basically, Sketchy's kind of been sitting for so long that the valve springs are, we're guessing, we're thinking they're pretty, they're pretty shot. Every time we turn up the car, it, uh, after 11.50, it wants to... Um, 11.80. Yeah, yeah, after 11.80. Oh, that's right, it did make more, okay, my, yeah. bad, my bad. Okay. Um, it was definitely like a valve spring roller coaster when we were asking early on, you know, 24 in the dome, 20, uh, 20 in the manifold, it, actually, that's reversed, but, uh, Anyway, it, just the valve springs were tapping out. We could hear it kind of breaking up towards the end. Um, we actually started pulling power out and then it cleaned up. So it kind of feels like the mechanical thing because you know normally you'd see something like that on the data logs. Um, but then miraculously they started coming back. I don't know, maybe a few heat cycles. Again, you know, people that are smarter than us have told us about stories about valve springs, how you know they, they might be old, they might test fine, they heat cycle, they go downhill, then they have this last, yay, before they finally just tap out for good. Um, it's possible that we were absolutely experiencing that. Um, towards the end of our runs though, you know, we were starting to lay down some power. We were seeing, you know, north of 1150, the 1170s, the 1180s, and then um, power kind of drastically nosedived, which might have been like that end curve for the valve springs. But then we ran into other issues. Um, we ran into sync issues. So we think that maybe our crank sensor bracket loosened up or something because uh, high RPM we're losing sync. So that's really like the main thing we need to focus on now is A, you know, what's our reason for that? And then B, um, probably just switch out the five-year-old valve springs that have been yeah. sitting for sitting. three yeah. years in partially yeah. compressed and uncompressed states. So, right, and I, I kind of thought about that and you thought about that, but we just never really, you know, we just like, let's just take it to the dyno. It's, you know, it's just so much now that we're finding out and we might have a little bit of converter slip maybe um, um either that or we were really just roasting the tires, tires in the dyno the and um that you know there have been a car or two that have slipped in that dyno so that's why he's got all the water jugs there oh yeah we yeah put in the trunk yeah there's a reason there was a reason why those came out so quickly um but yeah man next time we're gonna uh we're gonna address the valve springs we're gonna address the the, the crank sink issue and then we're going <clears throat> north of 1200 we, we, we were this close. We were like 20 horse shy of that of that 1200 that I wanted to personally see. Yep. But uh, there's no doubt that next time we come back, we're, we're going to be seeing that 1200. And then um, you asked if we're going to max out the turbos. And the answer is, of course, that's why we're here. Of course. And then when we max those out, you know, I'll save a little bit of money so I can put better ones in there. Because <laughs> I got some cheap turbos in there now. So, yeah. 2076s. But, yeah, let's... Uh, I don't know. I, I think they're probably close to being maxed out. What do you think, Sai? Um, 
Like, what do you think? Like thirty? Like, what do you usually see out of a seventy-six? Like, so well, that's a cast seventy-six. So I would probably say you're probably gonna get to that thirteen, fourteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. Yeah. I mean, they'll be. Yeah. They'll be. Yeah, but that's, that's still going to be a fun party. I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to be complaining that the car slow it. I don't think it's going to be slow at 1,400 horse. No, it should, it should get us some fast times that we're looking for. That's good. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yep. Just, just to have it back and running and driving hey, and hey, seeing it on hey, the street today. It drove back from the dyno on its own power. Yeah, that's, and that's, Sometimes that just doesn't quite happen. You realize you like literally drove sketchy. On the street. Oh shit! I drove sketchy for the first before you time did. since I moved to Florida last year or two years ago. You've driven it more than him. You've driven it more than years. me in the last two years. I didn't mean to steal your thoughts. No, dude. I'm glad you did. You you did a lot of work on the car, and I wanted you to kind of enjoy it. Honestly, it was a great night to drive around with the top down. It no was. Lie. In December, you have the top down in Florida. I mean, no complaints. Good no stuff. complaints. It's not snowing. No, it's not snowing. But the heat sucks. I mean, summertime is terrible. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so uh, glad I'm gonna get out of your hair. Happen. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have any hair. That's uh, fine. <laughs> to get out of it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't uh, mean it. I'm just it jealous. Way. I'm just jealous of how much hair you have. That's all. <laughs> I've, been, I, I, I've been wanting to cut it. It's so like all the haircut places are so busy. It's like I go in there I'll and cut get it for you. You, might you have a shaver? Like, you guys don't get no. it. <laughs> yeah, big my head. I could do, get rid of my surfer boy haircut. That's, no, uh, you shouldn't. You should keep it. Keep it. Well, thanks, you guys. We'll get her yeah. back. I know, I, you know, like I said, we, we have very good trust in everything that we've seen today. We are, we, I am not at all disappointed. Like, this has been awesome. So. It's, it's, it was kind it's of like, part of it, first time It now. is part of it. Yeah. You're going to have certain things happen, and this is why we put him on the dynamo. Yeah. Yep. But hey, it's a firebird. It's happened. a phoenix rising from the ashes. She is. Is she only that in a long time? Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I used to own one. I had a 2002 Trans Am. Where you're like, what the heck was I thinking? Mine's on like this. Yeah. Yeah. Short lived. Two Short lived. Two years. Kind of like your, your new truck that you just bought today. I'm not sure if I want that. <laughs> but buyer's remorse. We'll figure it so out. So if anybody wants a. Uh, 2022 F450 platinum. Let me know. It's bad A and he doesn't like it. And, you know, it's, it's a $60,000 truck. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting crap about that. So. All right, guys. I will, uh, we're going to head out. <laughs> we're tired. You're tired. Thanks again.